Hey, this is Andrew to Merge. I'm here with you today to talk about avoiding shame triggers and embracing universal truths. So I wanted to start with the former, which is uh, shame triggers. Uh, it's great that we live in a world now where we look at parenting as more than just putting food on the table and putting a roof over kids' heads. I think there's so much we can do as caregivers to support our children's development, and I think the parenting world is trying to move forward with making the world a better place for our kids. But the flip side to that is that um, we are filled with uh, shame triggers for parents, especially moms. Not that dads are exempt from this, but moms especially. Uh, many of you might be familiar with the work of Brene Brown. Brene Brown talks about the web of shame for women in society and the idea is that any choice a woman makes, um, shame uh, kind of pulls them in the opposite direction. Oh, the other choice would have been the right one. You should feel bad about the one you made, um, which is unfortunately not uh, an exemption in the parenting world. If anything, it is amplified. Uh, social media also tends to amplify this feeling of shame. And there is a lot of well-intentioned uh, content out there that is um, ideally supposed to be supporting parents, but more often than not, might be making parents feel bad about the choices they have made for their kids. So I want to start there and move forward from that and um, start with the very basic fact that um, as a parent, your intentions are good. You are doing your best for your child. I don't know you, but I'm going to tell you that, that you are doing your very best and you deserve to be affirmed for the parent that you are. And I want to start with a few universal truths, things that we are going to put out there, shame-free, to uh, as a starting point to move from. Number one is that anything you want to do to support your child's growth and development is going to be individualized. That means that if there is any advice you are getting out there that is this global fix-it, that is this is the way to make your child thrive, you can take it and toss it because whoever's putting that out there doesn't know your kid. Now you're welcome to see something and read something and try it, but do not feel bad if that does not work for you, if it does not resonate with you because the person that is putting that out there does not know your child and they also are likely putting that out there because they are selling something in some way. That's just the truth. It doesn't mean they're bad or, or malintentioned, but they are certainly selling something if they are putting content out there, right? So let's start with that. That's point number one. We have to do individualized supports for, for individual kids. Number two, anything you do to support your child is going to start with the process of attunement. So what is attunement? Attunement is being able to be present and connected with the needs of your child. Now this is especially important for supporting emotional regulation or social emotional needs, but this is still true no matter what we are trying to work on in terms of helping our child to grow. Being really tuned in to what our child needs or what our child is trying to communicate is going to help us as a starting point for their growth. Now you may be thinking, Andrew, you said this was gonna be shame free and I find it very hard to stay attuned to my child I have a lot of stress, I have a lot of demands, and I'm not always attuned to the needs of my kid, and now I don't feel good about myself. Well, don't worry, you're not alone. It is hard to stay attuned to your child. As a parent, I can attest to the fact that I am certainly not always attuned to the needs of my kids, not even close to always, and that is okay. But this is a process, and acknowledging that working towards attunement is going to better our kids is a good starting point. And this brings me to point number three. And point number three is taken from our first two, that our child needs are individual, and we want to work towards attunement. And so number three is you can't do it alone. You can't. The old adage is it takes a village, right? Well, it might not be a whole village, but you certainly can't do it by yourself. Now, I am not here to tell you what form your support may take. It may be your extended family, it may be your school, it may be your teachers, it may be your therapist, it may be a close and trusted friend that is there for you to talk at the end of a hard day and listen to you, that knows you, that knows your child and is there for you just to listen. Any of these might be what this means to you. And if you don't have that person and now you're still feeling shamed, and I'd like to think most of you have at least one person out there, but if you don't, 
reach out to us as a clinic and hopefully we can figure out something to support you and start as a starting point because I don't want anyone to feel bad about being isolated or alone. But the important thing to acknowledge is again that this needs to be a process where we embrace community. Wellness and support starts with community. We cannot do this in isolation. So those are our three universal truths, right? No one is here to tell you that what you are doing to support your child is wrong. You should trust your intuition. And if you don't know the right choices to make, seek out other people that know your child to talk to, that you can confide in and consult with, because this is a process that takes community. So let's continue to work together towards these three universals and make the world a better place for us and our children. Thank you. <laughs>